Sambonani Tomala Dumelani and welcome to Matumi Media Studios where we offer services like podcasts, music videos, short films, commercial, photo shoot and studio rentals. For more information, go to www.matumimedia.co.za and you can also email us on bookings at matumimedia.co.za We are Matumi Media Studios, Beyond the Lens. don't know who they are they sell us fake foods i don't know where they get these products and they manufacture them in the country mm. but our law enforcement also they are not doing anything i would believe that we should not allow foreign nationals to actually operate you know this such small businesses if they want to operate let them bring technologies in south africa let them bring things that which skills that which we Hey, what it do? Yeah, um, born in '99, who decides to get my grease? Baby, tell me now if the feelings that decrease or maybe increase. Can we share Ibiza? Then I eat it in the morning like a cold pizza. Masakare le boshe go sapa endina. Then I like that pussy thing, baby. I don't need her. Get higher than the petrol. Welcome to one hour show with us. As you can see today, the background is different. Simply means the Sakobuya without wasting any time of it. On a count of five, four, three, two, one. Today, right here on one hour show, Khalifa Blessing Ramoba. <laughs> Welcome to our show. Thank you so much. How are you? I'm good. I'm so excited. Yeah. The reason why Gitaya saw Gilead episode is because sure. Um, I've been seeing you on social media. I've been following you your pages. Yes. The yes, yes. I didn't think of today. I was going to do that. So. <laughs> and also the person that I see on social media is a different person from the one that I I see now. Yeah. yeah. In terms of um, you are so serious on social media. Yeah. But here you're just a bubbly person. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah. Okay. One more, one more. I was showing. Thank no, you for thanks, my us. brother. And uh, thank you for welcoming me. And. Uh, uh, I'm here to actually, you know, I've never done this thing before, but mm. uh, it's the first time I'm invited into a podcast. Mm. But I think that we're going to have a, a very lovely, you know, conversation. Thank you so much. Um, before we can continue, I want yeah. you to explain to the people, um, Blessing Ramova. Okay, my name is Blessings Ramova, and um, I was born in Gauteng, Soweto. Mm. And uh, uh, at a very young age, we left, we went to Limpopo, where I originally come from, mm. uh, with my parents. And I was raised there in the streets of uh, the villages of Limpopo. And uh, I started school there, uh, whereby I did also metric and um, pursued my studies uh, in, in, in Houting, the University of Limpopo, at the University of uh, Johannesburg and I studied mining engineering and uh, that's where my activism started in terms of advance, ad advancing the issues of the people and the community uh, of uh, the University of Johannesburg in terms of assisting the students mm -hmm. with uh, the issues of students and my activism basically started there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, I then finished my studies at uh, the University of Johannesburg uh, and um, went to the mining sector. I worked there, but uh, you know, I just didn't like the environment itself. Mm -hmm. I wanted to change some of the things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I then went into ex activism. I founded the organization called the Mining Forum of South Africa, mm -hmm. which we do um, activism advocating for transformation in the mining sector. Mm -hmm. um, advancing in terms of the issues uh, that which the workers are experiencing and also of the community where these mining companies are operating and um, we realize that many of the companies are not complying with regard to the social and labor plans mm -hmm. you know empowering the community where they operate mm -hmm. that itself is not happening and 
we saw dim, we saw it dim necessary that you know we we actually come forward and advance that. Uh, but again, you know, advancing the issues of the public in terms of uh, as an activist, you mm -hmm. really do not have uh, power. Uh, politicians are the ones that which have got these powers to actually transform mm. because they've got, uh, you know, the mandate is from the government to, to transform the sector as a whole. Mm. And um, we realize that, you know, in terms of our activism and influence is limited. Mm. Mm. Uh, we then, you know, uh, engage with the Department of Mineral Resources, the minister and so on. Mm. Uh, but itself that we don't see, you know, that transformation happening. Mm. Uh, the mining companies are relaxed and uh, the department is also sleeping and not doing their job. And uh, that's why now we came to introduce uh, the organization Employment Rights Party. Mm. Um, and also not only focus on the mining sector, but to advance the issues of employment amongst the people of South Africa, more importantly, looking at the current unemployment high rate. Um, you know, about 52% of young people in South Africa, they are unemployed. Uh, you look at uh, unemployment in general in yeah. the country is about 32%, and that is not healthy for the country. Mm. And I'm um, someone that is very passionate about uh, employment of our people in the country because I know of poverty. Mm. You know, I was actually the first person to get a degree uh, mm -hmm. in my family at the University of, of, of Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw that also change in my life and um, the life of the people that which I was born with. And if someone is unemployed, that which touches me is mm -hmm. something that which is very emotional to me. Mm -hmm. uh, to see uh, most of the graduates uh, who are unemployed and uh, unable to find a job. Yeah. I interact with a lot of young people on my social media mm. platforms mm. and uh, uh, most of them in terms of the, the issues that which they talk to, talk to me about. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry for that. And uh, uh, being unemployed uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for them, you know, um, although myself, I'm doing well <coughs> on my own space. Yes. And, uh, but. I talk to, I've got more than 1 million followers on, on my social media yeah, yeah. platforms and I engage with yeah. a lot of people and yeah. them, a lot of them asking money mm. from me and, mm. um, and I'm, I'm saying that, but this is not healthy, yeah, yeah. you know, um, <clears throat> telling me about their stories, how, you know, um, issues of uh, poverty that yeah. they're experiencing. Yeah. Um, yeah. That itself, yeah, it's um, it has touched me. It's very painful. Very, very painful. But, you know, you can't sit and do nothing. Mm -hmm. As a leader, you, 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 you must, uh, you know, you must bring solution to the people. Yes. Um, I've got, a, you know, a background of leadership mm -hmm. from the University of Johannesburg as the president um, or chairperson of the mining forum within the, institu uh, within the institution of the university, mm -hmm. advocating for the rights of students, yes, yes. making sure that uh, I get them bursaries mm -hmm. where I can. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are many who can come forward and say, I have studied because of that, you know, gentleman, mm -hmm. where I went mm -hmm. out to institutions and uh, looking for, you know, bursaries for students. And that itself, uh, you know, it has, uh, it, it, it has helped a lot of uh, mm -hmm. uh, people. And uh, I continue to do that. And uh, yeah, I'm very passionate about uh, seeing people employed. Yeah. And also not only that, the organization itself we're looking at, uh, you know, protecting the jobs that which mm -hmm. we have and which we think that uh, a lot of politicians, they don't have the best interest at heart to make sure that uh, seeing a lot of people employed, uh, that which makes me very happy. Let's talk about the ERP, the formation of the ERP. Yes, yes. Sir. How did it come about? As I said, um, you know, the unemployment rate in South Africa is a problem. Mm. Um, and also, I'm one person that which, you know, I like to share, you know, vacancies, mm. in, I, which I, I'm, I'm no longer doing, but I used to do that. I've seen that. Yeah, I used to share jobs, um, and vacancies and so on. Mm. I've got a place in Salamaba block which yes. I used to share that. And uh, but I, I I realized that you know what this thing it's is big enough. is bigger than me. Yeah. Um, I can do better than this. Mm. Uh, mm. And also to bring about a voice to the public and mm. uh, also in the political space of about creation of you know yes. of jobs. Uh, and um, 
So we are actually, Employment Rights Party came about uh, to be a voice for for employment in South Africa. I, we, we realize that a lot of companies, I mean, a lot of political parties are much focused on other bigger issues. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we realize that the issues of South Africa at the immediate is the issues of bread and butter. Mm -hmm. um, that's why now you see us having to provide about 28 million people mm -hmm. are dependent on grant. You know, uh, from out of 62 million, That's and huge. 7 million people mm -hmm. are the one that which are employed and are paying tax, mm -hmm. you know, to actually, you know, support everyone, 7 million out of mm -hmm. 62. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's not, it's not uh, sustainable. And uh, looking at the current, uh, you know, uh, statistics about mm -hmm. uh, unemployment uh, rate and there are 7 million who are looking for jobs right now, in the, you know, looking for, 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 for jobs. That itself is what drives us to actually, you know, come forward as a political party to be the voice uh, about, uh, you know, finding ways to create, in, you know, employment in the country, mm -hmm. and also advance in terms of uh, making sure that the government prioritizes, uh, you know, employment of of the nation of the people, you know, as a priority than any anything else because a lot of people in the country they are living in poverty. Um, the ERP is, is, is an organization. When did it start? Okay, um, the ERP, we, we actually started last year, um, December. That's when we're busy with uh, the registration. Mm. But effectively, we started this year in terms of advancing, you know, the issues of, uh, you know, activism yeah, and, yeah. Uh, as a political party, mm. which will be contesting the elections this year. What is the difference between the ERP and other political parties that All right, are looking at... Existing? Our, our the, the, you know, as I've said, other political parties, you know, in terms of their policies and their advancement, mm, mm. you know, I think that they're looking at things that which are far mm. uh, for achieving at the moment. We're looking at the immediate solution to yeah. the current crisis that yeah, which yeah. the country has um, issues of um, of poverty, yes, yes, and how can we alleviate poverty? Mm, you know. Mm. Um, even a country whereby you know twenty eight million are, are mm. dependent on grants mm. itself is not is not, yeah, not good. You know, yeah. I interact with a lot of graduates, mm. um, a lot of young people who are unemployed and looking for jobs. And um, when I talk to them, every time it's about give me opportunity for for for, for uh, what you call for employment. Mm. I do not employ, mm. right? I don't employ. But what I'm trying to say is that uh, you know the current. You know, priority for political parties, parties it should be you know um, issues of you know creating a conducive environment uh, mm -hmm. for for businesses to thrive, so that we are able to create jobs you know in the country. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what political parties must do. Yeah, you know, yeah. um, you know that political parties will be speaking about uh, expropriation of land without compensation. Mm -hmm. Some will speak about nationalization of this and this and this and this. What, you know, differentiate us from other political parties is mm. we are speaking about jobs and jobs now because that is what is needed, you know, as an urgent intervention that which is required mm. for South Africans. I think many of South Africans right now, what they need is to, pre to put bread on the table. Mm. And mm. Um, a lot of political parties, they don't focus on that. And mm. also finding solutions to actually, you know, create employment in the country. Mm. And I think that's what we are going to be, you know, prioritizing. Currently, how many members of uh, the ERP, maybe Valoru, they've already joined the, the organization? Uh, we we have got a database which we are creating, okay. um, you know, because we just started, uh, mm -hmm. you know, right. and um, I can tell you that, uh, you know, we do have a database of young and unemployed young mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. 20,000 20, 20, people, that, mm -hmm. that which we have got a database that which we are creating and that mm -hmm. we continue to, to actually to push and... Uh, and also go into the communities, talk to communities and all of that. And all we are going to be using also the social media platform to reach to young people mm. who are currently, you know, unemployed, unemployed, whom we are fighting for them to say that, uh, you know, you need to get involved in yeah. politics. Don't sit and no one is coming to actually help you. You know, you need to help yourself. You know, the politicians of this country... You know, we gave them about 30 years uh, to actually transform the change mm. and transform and change the lives of South Africans. And that itself, it has not been happening. And we are saying to young people that come forward, you know, and be a, you know, and be a voice 
whereby you know you, we, we create you know our own future the way we want to see it and mm -hmm. find a way to create mm -hmm. you know e employment for them mm -hmm. and uh, that's one one thing that which we want to we want to go to parliament mm -hmm. and be able to raise issues about you know young people that in, in terms of issues that which they're experiencing mm. and finding ways to create you know solutions that which are meant for young people mm. and south africans in general so the main focus of the erp is to focus on eradicating poverty correct and, and, and correct and, correct and, and also and, protecting the current jobs that which you know the current protecting the current jobs mm, you know mm, mm. Uh, when you talk about retrenchments which is happening in the mm, industry mm. that itself you know is also a bad thing for mm. the for the economies bad thing for south africans mm. so our main you know goal is to make sure that you know for the creation of of, of jobs mm, uh, yeah. push for a government that which will create a conducive environment mm, mm. for for companies to be able to also come into the country mm. and do business and also come and create jobs and also to protect the jobs that which we currently have mm, mm. yeah blessings i want to understand from your side there are many political parties or organizations yeah. that every year we see new organizations yeah. coming in so i want to check from your side, what's your take on this organization? Because they, they, they come up with, um, for an example, they, they, they can say we are here to eradicate poverty, we are here to yeah. protect the rights of the people. But on a later stage, when they immediately get uh, exposure and when they get uh, uh, the attention and the votes of the people, they turn away from the, the main promise to the people. I want to understand, what do you think caused that? People, they come in with different, you know, uh, or to, in terms of intentions, mm -hmm. um, some they come maybe you know just to be in parliament mm -hmm. and uh, get salaries mm -hmm. and um, just to enjoy the benefits. Just to enjoy the benefits. Mm -hmm. um, I think this thing you must have the best interest of heart in terms of uh, for the people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you cannot make a leader. Mm. Uh, leaders are born. Mm. Um, mm. That's why when you speak about the issues of unemployment, it's mm. something that touches me. I've seen it. Um, yes. I really hate poverty mm. because mm. I've lived in one. Yeah. And uh, so when you change your life and you're becoming better, you mm. must pull other people mm. with you to change their lives. Mm. That's basically it. So some people, they do things for the benefit of themselves, and which is, I think... It's what the ANC has done to the people, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, when they came, they came with, you know, good intentions. Mm -hmm. And um, we voted for them, mm -hmm. but I think that they've betrayed this nation mm -hmm. in terms of uh, what is actually they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, they they ended up, you know, enriching themselves mm -hmm. and uh, caring for themselves. And even now, it, it's very difficult. Let me just take an example for you. Mm -hmm. And I, I hear stories also in these platforms of social media that a lot of them that I'm talking to them mm -hmm. to say that even to get a job in the government institutions, you need to know someone, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. or you have to sleep with someone. Mm -hmm. You know, it shouldn't be like that. You know, yeah. um, they hire their own, you know, family members, and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. you know. But if you don't know any, anyone, you are not connected to anyone. You are not going to be employed, you know, uh, meaning that you are con going to continue mm. to live in poverty or you are going to get, you know, the same 350 grant, mm. which mm. I think, you know, I define it as a, as a bribe, mm. you know, they are bribing mm. you to keep quiet yeah. so yeah. that you don't revolt against, mm. against them, um, mm. you know. And young people should not be happy of getting, uh, of getting you know, grants. Mm. Um, young people should be happy to get, you know, a, a job that which is sustainable mm. Mm -hmm. So that they are able to work for their families, they are able to work for their kids, you know, and uh, build their future. And uh, I think that you know, you know, we should actually make sure that we, when we vote, we vote for leaders that which you know speaks about such things, mm -hmm. creation of you know of jobs, mm -hmm. and uh, we must also interrogate their policies to say is is policies that which you are proposing practical mm -hmm. in terms of alleviating my problem as a citizen, mm -hmm. you know, not. That uh, you know, not policies that which are going to depend the problem that which we currently have in terms mm. of you know unemployment rate uh, that which we have. Talking about an ANC, yeah. as an organization that is the ruling party. Yeah. The the current state of employment. Yeah. It's it's so sudden and also the issue of the crime in South Africa is very high. Yeah. And then 
like so many things are happening in South Africa under yeah. the ruling part. Yeah. And, and 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 people are getting killed. Mm, Cases are not solved. We still have the AKAs, Sentinel yeah. US. What can you say about the ERP? Do you have a strategic and plan to eradicate things that ANC or any other political party is not doing? You know, there are many problems. Uh, you can't finish them. Mm. There are many problems that uh, can list in terms of issues. Mm. Uh, that are problems that which, you know, uh, are there mm. under the ANC leadership. Mm. Mm. Um, first of all, um, you look at uh, our borders. Uh, they're wide open. Mm, mm. We we have got the issues of uh, you know illegal immigration in the country. Mm, mm. Everyone they come in the country as mm, they like. Mm, um, mm. The issues of crime itself they don't only come from you know um, our citizens mm. being you know not having anything to do mm. and are hungry and they commit crime. Yeah. But also we must look at other external factors like. Uh, border control mm. we don't have border control in the in the country mm. Mm. everyone uh, coming from you know uh, other countries they mm. come to south africa for opportunities mm. and uh, we see a lot of crime that which has been committed and um, uh, you know killings hijackings mm. you know people are getting involved and some of those crimes that you know you, you cannot uh, trace those people mm. Mm. now what happens is that foreigners come into the country, you know, and um, they are also desperate. They have got their own situations yeah. where they come yeah. from, and also they want to live and they want to, you know, they want something. They want, uh, you know, they want something, you know. Then they commit yeah. crime. Yeah. Some of them, and uh, some of them, they are employed in the in these companies uh, that which hires, uh, you know, foreigners, and uh, you see them as truck drivers. You see them, you know, as waiters. You see them. Now they even open spaza shops mm. where we stay, you know, mm. uh, in terms of our villages, our townships. And um, we've got these people um, that which we are now, you know, if you look, I mean, in the past, we used to have our families, our brothers and mm. everyone mm. operating spaza shops in the in our communities. All of them, they are, you know. They're dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are normal, and uh, there's these mushroomed mm -hmm. individuals that we don't know that who they are. Mm -hmm. Some of them they are illegal, but they are living in our community. They are operating businesses that which are not registered. They sell us fake foods, and um, so in general they are feeding us, and we are taking our monies. We are giving it to them, and these people, as I've said, their businesses are not registered. They take the money, they don't bank it, they just put it under the mattress and all of that. We don't know who are these people. Mm. And I think that, you know, um, you know, some of them, they commit crime. We're trying to trace them. We mm. cannot trace them. You know, um, the crime statistics is very, very high. Mm. And uh, which I think under the ERP, if we are to be given opportunity, you know, whether to be in parliament or to leave this country, what we will do is that we will eradicate that. No illegal foreign national will operate a spaza shop in South Africa. Mm. No, even a simple thing like a saloon. Mm. South Africans must take those industries, I mean, I mean those, you know, uh, those uh, businesses and operate them. Mm. We shouldn't allow foreign nationals to actually operate a spaza shop mm. or even a saloon mm. or any other small businesses that which a South African can do. Yeah. Those yeah. businesses should be mainly reserved for South Africans to operate. But nowadays is that our graduates, they can actually go into those places, right? And occupy those spaza shops and therefore operate as part of it to, so as a you know development of SMEs, small mm. businesses. Mm. We can actually as a government intensify them, I mean, give them, you know, incentivize them in terms of giving them capital to start businesses. But other than having foreigners who are, we don't know who they are, they sell us fake foods, I don't know where they get these products, and they manufacture them in the country, mm. but our law enforcement also, they are not doing anything. I would believe that 
we should not allow foreign nationals to actually operate, you know, be such small businesses. If they want to operate, let them bring technologies in South Africa. Let them bring things that which skills that which we do not have. Even those who are employed, when you enter into South Africa through the border, mm -hmm. you should actually have a skill that which we do not have. No one should be actually be given an opportunity to enter the country just to come here, just to be a bricklayer if we've yeah. got a lot of bricklayers yeah. in the country. Yeah. That itself should stop, you know. Mm. Um, you cannot, I mean, our, our brothers have got, you know, uh, you know driving licenses mm. yeah. and uh, some of them, they've got, uh, you know, this qualification for CIRA in terms yeah. of security. Yeah. But they're sitting at home mm. and you find a company here you know, employing about 98% of their employees mm. are foreign nationals. Mm. And if you are checking that, they don't have even, you know, the right papers into the country. Yeah. It yeah. is illegal. It is illegal to, as an employer, to employ the, 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 the foreign nationals who do not have, uh, you know, uh, what you call right papers to mm. come into the country. Mm. So what I will say is this. We need to strengthen our borders. If mm. needs be, let's have the, the, the defense force our soldiers mm. building holes across the borders of South Africa. Mm. Because anyway, they are doing nothing. We just deployed some there in DRC mm. with two mm. billion rand. Our taxpayers, mm. you understand? Yeah. We deployed them to DRC. But also, if that is important, let's also take care of the issues, the, the, domestics, the domestic issues that which are affecting us. Mm. Let's make sure that we protect our borders. Let's build holes. We have got uh, you know National Defense Force. They are doing anything anyway. Mm -hmm. Let them occupy those spaces mm -hmm. around our borders. We've got engineers within also the yeah, the, yeah. the SNDF. Yeah, yeah. Let them build those walls. You know, we we give them budget every mm -hmm. year. We don't mm -hmm. see what he's doing. Let them build what if we have to increase it that the budget, you know, into SNDF to make mm -hmm. sure that they build the walls. Not no, I'm not talking about chicken, you know, mm -hmm. fence or what that yeah. which we did during COVID today. Let's build the walls, walls and make yes. sure that you know we protect our borders, mm -hmm. we protect our sovereignty as a nation. Mm -hmm. Because our proud comes in protecting our nation itself. We know Africa has got problems. And also, it's important that the South African government must stop protecting criminals from other countries. Mm. What I mean when I say criminals, I mean those leaders in those countries yes. which are oppressing their people mm. and their people are running into our it's country. Yes. It should not be allowed. Mm. That itself must end. It must come to an end. Mm. Secondly, why do we allow and have a cozy relationship with these you know, SADC leaders where as we know that they are actually oppressing their people. Yeah, Why yeah. don't we come forward? And therefore, if we have to sanction them individually, mm -hmm. that they must not set foot here in South Africa. But they are busy. They did, you know, uh, you know, enjoying Santan. They they live in Santan, you know, and then they go there only when they have to address the people. But they run their countries, they run their governments. Mm -hmm. But while they are here in South Africa, yeah, yeah. that is bullshit and should not be allowed. Yeah. You know, we should sanction these leaders to say, your people, I mean, I mean, my brother, you know, come in here. You know, I, I was actually driving around here and I see you stop by the robot there. And it's a woman with a child is yeah. begging yeah. and you can't ignore it. I mean, yes. you know, and Painful now news. you have to, you know, Take whatever you yes. have and give them because yeah. of you know your heart you know it doesn't, not, allow. It doesn't allow just yeah. to pass you know else. but you ask them you try to talk to them they are yeah. not South Africans these people yeah. and it's not only me even yourself you have seen them across the country yes. in the in, you know standing in the robot begging yes. around the traffic lights there yes. and all of that but yeah. now they are leaders they are there you know mm. uh, mm. at Santon there mm. having a nice life there mm. you mm. know. But why do we, and they are buying properties. We shouldn't allow them to do that mm. in the country. Mm. Let them go back where they come from yeah. and lead where they come from and lead the people on the ground where they come from. Other than us having to abba everyone, we mm. know we love, we love, we are Africans. Yes. We cannot take away from that. Mm. But we can, we cannot unite. Africa must unite, but we cannot, all of us, unite, unite in South Africa. <laughs> that is not sustainable. We cannot unite in, South Africa. in South Africa. Yeah. Right? Mm. We respect the sovereignty of Zimbabweans. Mm. We respect the sovereignty of Mozambicans mm. and all the rest of, yeah. of, of yeah. the continent. Mm. Right? But we must have our own respective countries and make sure that they lead properly. If you are not leading properly, therefore, 
we must sanction you to say no but you are becoming uh, you know a dictator in your country yeah, yeah you know do things right or else we are sanctioning you in in our country sure, so sure. by so doing now you are bringing law and order on not only in your country mm -hmm. and also other countries around surrounding us which is sadek blessings i want to ask you something if you were to be given the power yeah today what are the first things that you would fight and make sure they are eradicated first things number one is corruption right corruption um how how are you going to deal with corruption you have to strengthen the rule of law strengthen the rule the rule of law mm -hmm. um have effective you know institutions of government of government that which will be able to put right people in right places yes, yes. right we are led by criminals mm -hmm. to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. you you cannot you know <laughs> you know we are led by criminals yeah. we elect criminals to power to lead us mm -hmm. and hoping that these guys are not going to steal right mm -hmm. i can tell you that uh, if if we le we let the anc govern us for the coming 30 years they have had 30 years to govern us mm. and look at the issues that which we currently have so do you believe that all these leaders that we have right now are criminals we don't have leaders anymore there are no more leaders in the ANC there are no more leaders in the ANC if we had good leaders we were not going to have the problems that which we have currently mm. the high unemployment rate the poverty the load shedding itself that itself, you are taking the rights from the people itself. We are, you know, it's, it's difficult to live in South Africa today mm -hmm. because of those issues, right? Now, you know, load shedding itself. I mean, you know, how many companies have retrenched their workers mm -hmm. because of load shedding, yes. right? You, then you took a bread out of someone's mouth. Mm -hmm. They were working for themselves. They were changing their lives, mm -hmm. but itself has been taken away, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now you are saying that if being given the opportunity, we'll take away, you know, the rule of law. Bring, bring back, I mean, bring back the rule of law, mm -hmm. meaning that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, in terms of order, take out corruption, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. uh, and and create jobs, give people their right is it's it is their right to have a job mm, right mm. if without a job i mean really you are taking rights of many people mm, you know mm. away you know the issue of crime itself mm. the crime itself i will eradicate crime how are you going to do that because the very same people who should eradicate crime are the ones that are involved in crime because if you can check nowadays my police they're involved in the crime they take the bribes, they escort the drugs, and, and all these things are coming to harm our We community. hire wrong people, as I've said. We mm. give wrong people jobs. Don't you think they're not earning enough? Now, because that's one somebody, of the things about uh, public servants. Somebody, right? so, somebody, um, somebody rose an issue to say, I wouldn't take bribe if I was getting paid enough. I would agree. The public servants must be you know, paid well. I would, I, would, I would like, and their working conditions also in terms of not only the police, mm -hmm. right, um, and also the nurses, the yes, teachers. The teachers yes. I, I, I don't think that they've been given much respect that which they deserve, mm -hmm. right? I wouldn't be here if there was no a teacher from yeah, my yeah. village don't who taught talk. me and, uh, you know, had given their time yes. in order to, you know, to groom me mm -hmm. to become who I am today. Mm -hmm. And um, that itself is that, uh, you know, there's no much focus in making sure that the government employees mm. are be given enough to, enough uh, you know uh, salaries in order to sustain them. Mm. Yes, mm. I agree. I agree with you. Some of them is just a mere you know it's just a corruption. A corruption mm. is corruption. Some of the police forces mm. that which are in 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 our uh, police uh, you know. Uh, Police, police officers in our police force, mm. they are just corrupt. And those are people that which we must root out. Mm. Uh, and those are the ones even at, uh, what do you call, in our borders mm. where they, are, they, they just, you know, take bribes, mm. you know, to allow, you know, these people who are actually without papers to come into, into our country. You know, corruption itself is, is, is deep in South Africa. But there is hope uh, for South Africans. We need to make sure that we take out the ANC out of power, but we elect leaders that which have got the best interest at, at heart mm. to rule this country and to make things right. Let's talk about the education system of South Africa. Yeah. Um, I think there are many 
mistakes that people do. Yeah. Mwana ujia kiriria wa maybe just three marunyo go follow something. Yeah. Jigi jiga ona me vera go for that. Yeah. Yes. I want to understand from your side, Ori. What what's happening? Because Banaba Ujua education is the key to success or to drive poverty out of the house. Yeah. But then I school look at ka ho pior ba no chencha malaba ba ona and everything. Then jigi jigi mwana a tomaru wa pla ba ona mmerego. Like what's happening? The problem is it the education system or maybe it's the corruption or maybe it's the South Africa ga be ona ene ene mishum. Our educational system is wrong. It's flawed. We 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 have been taught irrelevant things. And um, look, in the apartheid time, what the apartheid government did, mm. they built colleges and uh, technical colleges, mm. which mm. if you wanted to be electrician, you're going directly to be, you know, to, yeah. to, to learn to do, you know, yeah. that yeah. The plumbers will go and do Plumbing. exactly that and yeah. do and work with your hands. Mm. Uh, mm. Bricklayers will, will yeah. go to that, the nurses will go to that. All of those, many of those colleges are, are closed and uh, they are not operational. Now, even the government itself, the way it's failing is that if you look at the design of our curriculum and uh, in terms of courses that which are introduced, mm -hmm. it's irrelevant things, you know, things that which will not find you mm -hmm. a job. What they are happy with is just to produce a lot of graduates mm -hmm. who have got nothing to do that itself. Mm -hmm. So... We have got a lot of graduates that cannot even find jobs yeah, in their yeah. discipline that which they've actually went to school to mm -hmm. uh, i mean to for and that itself is a problem it, it's a problem imagine having about seven million unemployed people in the country seven million now yesterday the anc was saying that uh, through the what you call the manifesto, manifesto yes. um in kzn mm -hmm. they were launching their manifesto and if you listen to them, they say that in the in the in the coming five years, we are going to create 2.5 million jobs. They are talking about 2.5 million jobs in five years. And now you look at the statistics to say how many people are looking for jobs in South Africa. Seven million. Mm. That means they are only going to take a fraction of 2.5 yeah. million. Mm. And then they say that every year we are going to create. 500,000 jobs mm -hmm. every year for five years, which amount to that 2.5 yeah. million. Yeah. Now, what, are, what are they saying? <laughs> <laughs> what are they saying, my brother? What are they saying? I mean, we have got new graduates. In that five years, we'll be having new graduates. Yeah. Meaning yeah. that number of, I mean, mm -hmm. that percent of seven, seven I mean, so, uh, I mean of, of seven million will be increased. Will be increased. Yes. And then there are only, you know, only 2.5 million um, yeah. people are going to get jobs, not not next year. Do you, do you believe they'll give to? No, but I'm just saying. I'm just <laughs> trying to tell you in terms of the leaders that which we have. Yeah, you know. But I think I, in the past they've been promising people now, jobs. And they, how do you create? Do how do you create jobs? How do you create jobs? Mm. That's the most important, uh, mm. you know, uh, uh, thing that which they should say. They don't know. They don't have a plan in terms of how they create jobs. Mm. Look at the other countries what they did mm -hmm. the likes of china the likes of they industrialized what we need is a solution for this country you mm -hmm. asked me before if being given an opportunity to leave this country what i will do we've got minerals in the mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. i'm a mining engineer by profession yeah. i know in terms of the mineral deposit of this country i know what we have mm -hmm. i know what we can do with our minerals mm -hmm. right we don't beneficiate our minerals here mm -hmm. in fact we take our minerals outside you know, to sponsor other people with jobs, and then they come here as final products, and we are actually importing mm. all those goods back mm. into our country, and now we have created jobs elsewhere, mm. but we do not have jobs ourselves. Now, what do the ANC should have done, or would have done, you suppose that, they're supposed to have said, half of your minerals that which you mine in this country, you are going to beneficiate it here to create jobs here, to create factories here, so that we are able to have jobs as a country also, right? And not only beneficiate, you know, you are going to do product out of those uh, minerals that which as you are beneficiating, mm. meaning that you are bringing industries into the country. Mm. That is what solution that which we must have. Create and also policies that which, you know, are, are, are friendly for business, you know, uh, uh, you know, Government responsibility is to create a conducive environment mm. uh, for business yeah. to thrive. Yeah. That's very, very important. Mm -hmm. But now the question is, is the ANC doing that? 
the policies that which we are introducing. Now, you know, other parties will talk about the issues of land expropriation mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. compensation. Uh, compensation. Yeah. That's nonsense yeah. itself. Mm -hmm. Other than that, unless you want to be Zimbabwe, but if we want to take a Zimbabwe direction, we should do that. Mm -hmm. If we want to take the direction of Zimbabwe, we should do that. Why am I saying that? Now, you do not temper with the property rights. Mm -hmm. We need capital to flow in South Africa. Direct investment into the country mm -hmm. itself and also domestic investment people to have confidence to put money into the economy so that we are able to create jobs and that itself we cannot do that if we come up with crazy 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 ideas <laughs> like a uh, expropriation of land because now you should be careful in this in this way mm. you don't tamper with the property rights mm. you don't do that mm. right now a lot of these farms that which we have, yeah. a lot of this land that which we have in South Africa, mm. these guys, they've got what we call title deed, mm. right? They go to the bank to say, you know, to have a collateral against their assets, mm. to borrow money and loans and all of that. Mm. Mm. If you are saying you are taking that land, basically you are collapsing, you are, I mean, you are really disrupting the economy and, uh, you know, what you are doing, you are killing our economy mm. because you yeah. are saying that you are going to take... The, the, the land by force mm. and there's not going to be repayment mm. of those because you're saying no compensation yeah. right yeah. the law currently you know allows us to do expropriation for the purpose of uh, you know uh, public use for example if you want to build a school you can expropriate but with a compensation mm. you negotiate with you know with the with the owner of the land to say we want to you know have a road just right in your property mm. you know and uh, you know we negotiate with you we give you know i give you i give you money you give me the the, the, the permission mm. you know to actually construct building schools and, and so on and so on and so on but if you are trying to you know uh, to temper with the property rights that itself also takes the investment away because no one would like to invest in a country mm. where property rights is, is a threat mm. right now what i'm trying to say is this in terms of the policies that which you know to create jobs we should come up with fresh ideas mm. on how to create jobs right if our policies that which we are proposing do not you know have you know do not impose threats on 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 on, on, on the property rights mm. everyone would like to to invest in the country mm. would like to put their money would like to build a factory would like to do this and this and this this and this and this. now what you are doing is that if you are saying you are expropriating without compensation, mm. you are saying to the banks, I'm not going to give you mm. your money. Mm. You know, mm. go to hell. Mm. I mean, we're not going to... Now, what are you doing to the banks? Mm. Basically, you are killing the... The, yeah, the economy yeah. of the country is held by the banks. Yeah, yeah. Basically, what you are doing, you, you, you are destroying the economy of the country. And that's not what we are willing to do. Young people should evaluate, assess... The policies that which are brought forward by these mm. political parties that which are singing, you know, so for, for you know, singing these uh, crazy ideas and uh, indoctrinating our people, our young people who don't know, they just think expropriation mm. of land mm. and these mm. socialist ideas that which you know, Germany had these socialist ideas. They change now. It's a capitalist state. Yeah, yeah. You look at Egypt. You look at Russia. They the changed. sovereign, uh, you know, the Soviet Union also. Mm. They changed yeah. because it doesn't work. I mean, we don't have to go far. I mean, look at Zimbabwe now. They came up with this socialist through mm. Mugabe, which is mm. no more. And uh, now we see them leaving the country. Half of the country are gone. You know? <laughs> they're coming elsewhere. I mean, you know, you know, they're coming to our country. Mm. And, uh, you know, we see teachers. We see professionals mm. who from Zimbabwe. Yeah, you know, yeah. They call themselves educated people. Mm. And uh, they come into our country. Mm. Why? Because they are leaders took a wrong decision. They failed them. They failed them. Mm. That we should not, not allow our leaders to do that. Mm. Let's interrogate. If a person is saying that, you know what, I'm coming to give you mm. this, but how are you going to do that? Is it practical? But already we have teachers here. L look at, now, <laughs> look what we are doing. Our teachers, most of our teachers yeah. are unemployed. Mm. And we are, are employing Zimbabweans to actually become teachers. That is nonsense should come to an end. Mm. Our people should take space. Mm. Mm. If there is any school that which is employing, you know, uh, what you call, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, what you call, uh, foreign national, it should stop. It should stop. Yeah. Our yeah. people should be given a priority. Mm. Why do you want our people to work? Mm. Now, we are suffering because of 
other people, you know, other countries, you know, bad decisions that which they took. I mean, really, I mean, if you, what do you think when you take uh, uh, someone's land by like, force? Like, blessings, I want to understand, man. Uh, the people that are in government. Yeah. Yeah. Older than 70s. Correct. But in South Africa, many companies do not allow a certain age to apply for it. Correct, job. correct. Why does the government allow that? And, and, and I think it's painful because, and these people, they're busy voting, hoping for changes in their lives. Yeah. But immediately when you start reaching 35 to 40, your chances of getting employed. Yeah, you have got restrictions. So yeah. why? Yeah. Like, it's like the government is using them for, 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 for gaining power. Yeah. And what is it that they can offer those people in, in return? Hence, I'm saying that itself. You know, I, I engage with a lot of young people. Mm -hmm. They brought that issue to me, mm -hmm. you know, um, on, on social media platforms. Mm -hmm. say, but really, um, do you actually... Uh, there's a platform that which he created under the website of mm -hmm. uh, Employment Rights Party where we actually take the database of those who are unemployed, okay? Because <coughs> with the purpose of saying that we want to engage the sitters, mm. we the sitters, uh, you know, we've got you know finance sitter, we've got yeah, mining yeah. sitter, we've got different, you mm. know. But these guys have been given, you know, billions of rents uh, every year mm. to actually train our people, which they are not doing. So we took that. We are taking that database to mm. actually to be able to share it mm. with those sitters to say, here are people who are looking for training opportunity. Yes, yes. These are people who are looking for placement and all yes. of that. We we'll continue to do that. Mm -hmm. But now, talking about the age restriction itself, mm -hmm. it should not be like that. It should not be like but that. But you realize that it's killing it's our country. It's killing a lot of people. Because it's I'm killing left. a lot of people in I'm terms of left. advancing their career. Yes, yes, right? In yes. terms of advancing their career. That should change itself. But remember, it's a government policy. Mm. right? That policy should be scraped. And that's why we are saying that, you know, if you vote for ERP, we are going to change that. Mm. That should not, you know, there should be a, just a plain, a plain you know, ground yes. for everyone to be able to apply. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I was looking at also at someone who was applying for a police position. Mm -hmm. And they give, I mean, this is someone that we just be not getting opportunity to apply to become a police mm -hmm. officer. But they want to be a police officer. Mm -hmm. But their age... And also the delay of COVID, you mm. know, COVID has delayed, yeah, yes. uh, delayed a lot of yes, individuals, yes, uh, yes. you know, and they wanted to apply for this, but they cannot apply. But it's a common policy that we should be changed, being given opportunity to go to parliament. And that's one of the things that which, you know, will eradicate because it's not actually saving uh, the people, mm. you know, right. Yeah. Mm. Like, I want to understand the, the, the organization that you have um, um, started right now. Yeah. How many youth? Are you targeting? We are, you mean in terms of the population of yes, this country? Yes. We are targeting one million youth. One million youth. Yeah, one million young people. So do you think you're going to change their situations in terms of... Correct, uh, correct. Uh, since I've been here, I don't... I've never spoken about anything else than, than employment. Mm, mm. Young people are now into drugs. Mm, mm, uh, mm. Many of South Africans mm, um, mm. in our community, uh, they are now into drugs... Uh, abuse of alcohol mm -hmm. and so many things that is currently happening mm -hmm. and um, you know some of the things you cannot mention in terms mm -hmm. of things that they are doing because yeah. they are not nice mm -hmm. but I can tell you to say that is because of desperation uh, they don't want to be there uh, you know there is this TV program you will see for yourself where mm -hmm. you know they actually consume you know uh, this substance abuse yeah, and so on yeah, yeah. that itself is because if you don't give me something to do mm -hmm. They will end up doing that, you know. Mm. Yes, because we don't give our youth something to do. Mm. They end up, you know, being confused and they go into this substance abuse, which is not good for them. It's destroying our young people. Mm. You know, you drive around even in town, you see people, young people, you know, in the corners there, you know, engaged in those substance abuse. And, uh, you know, we, it should come to an end. Let's give young people something to do. A meaning, a meaning thing to do, which is, which is employment. The government should should find a way to create, you know, not not again this grants thing that which they give it mm. as a bribery mm. uh, for our young people not to stand up, you what, know, what and, you and take fight. On that one? What you take on that one? You know what? I, I'm, they need it. They need it. But again, is the ANC uh, a bribery to to votes? 
and, and also to avoid a revolution from from happening mm. because we are getting something. Mm. So that itself, you know, they are creating that uh, you know a soft environment for them to be able to to operate. But anyway, that money they shouldn't use it, you know, to engage into al to buy alcohol and substance abuse and so on. Let them use it to apply in the meantime. Let them apply for jobs mm. and buy data. Anyway, data is expensive. Mm. 350 is nothing. Mm. And one of the things that which we are advocating mm. as, as, as a, a employment rights party is to make sure that data must not be a commodity. Mm. Data should be affordable. Mm. Data is a, it should be something that which becomes you know, yeah. a, a human right to have. Mm. You know, mm. I mean, really, data is expensive in South Africa. Everything is digital. You apply online, everything mm. that which we are doing, some of them now, yeah. they are even yeah. working online. Yeah. Why do we have to make data expensive? Mm. Now, who's benefiting from that? Mm. Right? That's, that's, that's time now young people come together. We approach these companies, mm. the likes of uh, the ones that which are giving data. Mm. We're going to speak to the executives to say, let data be affordable. Mm. Now, mm. you know, we don't know. But there is a company called, uh, you know, I don't know if I can mention it, uh, Starlink. I yeah, don't know okay, if you know the, the one of Elon Musk, mm, mm. The, the one that does a, a satellite mm, internet. Mm. Do you know that is there in Swaziland? Is there in, uh, you know, Malawi? Is there in Nigeria? Mm. Is there... It's South there. Africa under SADC is the only country that do not have, you know, that satellite uh, called Starlink. Mm. So that itself is to make internet affordable and accessible for everyone. That having that thing there, you know, uh, and of course is going to disrupt, the, you know, uh, you know, the market, uh, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, in terms of South Africans uh, network providers and so on. And... But we should fight to say that internet must be affordable. Mm. We should mm. not. I mean, internet should be affordable. Mm. I cannot, you know, decide to buy data or buy food. It, it cannot be like that. I must sense. buy food mm. and still buy data cheap. with what I have and cheap and affordable. And uh, that's what uh, what I'm saying to say that data should not be, you know, a, a commodity, just like education. It should be free, in fact, for everyone. Mm. How we do it, I don't know, but they have to find a way on how we are, we are doing it. Because now everyone is using the internet. For, for people to, you know, to watch us right now, they need internet. internet yes. it's, it's freedom to information. Let, let's, let's now you are depriving people mm. of information if you don't if it's difficult for them to access uh, networks. I think some time ago Julius Malema mentioned that yeah. uh, that uh, data, in actual fact, data should be free, yeah, yeah. so that people can be able to find opportunities online. Yeah. As you can see right now, yeah. everything is done online. Yeah, correct. It, almost everything is done. Correct. Online. So correct. What's your take on the DA, the EFF, and all these other political parties that are promising people things? What can you say? I think. People should be careful of the DA. That's my take. DA. Right? They've been given a chance at Western Cape. There. Mm. They are leading. They are provincial leadership. There. Mm. They've got the full power of the province. Mm. Right? And um, there's also an attempt. I don't know if it's them or is the who want to make it a country. Mm. But you look at the people of Kailesha. When they are walking across the streets, there is drainage all over. They are living in shacks. Mm. And, uh, you know, no basic needs there. And uh, they're living a very difficult life. Mm. But you go to the city where white people live, you know, it's a different story. It's a different story. You'll think that you are not in, in South Africa. Mm. But you go where black people are. So I don't think that, you know, they've got best interest at heart for our people, black people mm. itself. And they oppose every policy that which speaks about transformation mm. in the country. Mm. If you bring a subject that which brings about transformation, they, yeah. they will oppose it. Mm. And I do not know what the hell the black people are voting for them because they do not champion for, for, for the rights, uh, for, 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 for the champion for, for the advancement of the issues of black people. Mm. But we as black people continue to vote for them. Why are we doing that? Why don't we interrogate what is your policy towards this and towards mm. that? So that we know what is your intentions about us. Thinking about the ALC itself, they've got 30 years, we've given them time to, uh, time to, to actually, you know, yeah, lead us. That's a lot of time. It's a lot of time. Yeah, they yeah. failed, right? 
you know, they felt there is high un higher unemployment, inequality, crime, crime you know, poverty, and so on. Yeah. They don't deserve our votes anymore. Mm. Now, you look at the EFF, the policies are flawed there. Mm. There is a problem with the policies there, mm. which can make us Zimbabwe. We should avoid that. Mm. Let young people, and I give this, uh, you know, which, uh, exercise which to young people. That you don't the, land, the land expropriation is flawed. I've explained okay. it. Okay. Secondly, expropriation of mines. Mines, I mean, what you call yeah. these uh, nationalizations of, of mines? Of yeah. mines. I'm a mining engineer by profession. Mm -hmm. I know what it takes to operate a mining company. Mm -hmm. Do you know? If you look at the mining company, is is a capital intensive mm -hmm. industry. You need a lot of money to actually develop a mining company mm -hmm. up until it makes you know it it start producing mm -hmm. the minerals that which you want. Yeah. It's not a, the expertise that which are there. Also, it's not an easy one. Mm -hmm. Again, it's a property that belongs to someone. Yes. Why do you have to expropriate a property that belongs to someone? Mm -hmm. That is a foreign investors who you know from somewhere you know we don't know where they come from, but they have invested into that. Mm -hmm. They've put their money. What are you going to be doing? If then you expropriate, I mean, you nationalize the mines that which belongs to other people, what is going to be? They're going to be sanctioned mm. because now you're tapping into someone's property. Mm. Mm. Then this country is going to be sanctioned. Mm. Apart from that itself, we have got, I don't know, a lot of young people, they don't know that uh, currently South Africa, we've got a state-owned mining company. Do you know about which that? One? No, we don't know. Which, which one is that? We've got a diamond state-owned mining company. Which um, established in 1992 okay. uh, during apartheid, and um, Alesco is a diamond mine uh, in the Northern Cape. Okay. Um, during the Zodo Commission, now it was one of the companies that which was uh, what you call investigated for corruption mm. and uh, you know uh, maladministration mm. and so on. There are issues there basically. Mm. Uh, we we have failed. It's one of the failed ANC, you know, SOEs that which I can say, mm -hmm. you know, we have got a lot of SOEs that which are, co are collapsing. Mm -hmm. Look at Transnet now, you know, uh, no trains are not running, mm -hmm. you know, long distance, uh, what you call trains are not running. Mm -hmm. And uh, our, our infrastructure has been vandalized in a way we know by who, by foreigners, the nationals mm -hmm. that which have been caught, that is evident based on, you know, uh, evidence that you know police have uh, arresting a lot of illegals that which are stripping our our railway and so yes, on. And but going back to say the, to the company, which company is Alesco? Mm. Uh, you know we have failed actually as as a model to say we can actually run you know a state entity which is a mining company mm. and successfully so and multiple. I think about it if it started in 1992. By now, supposed to have now in coal, mm -hmm. not only in diamond, maybe we're supposed to be. Uh, yeah, but because the state can do that as part of ways to create jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, you are not tempering with uh, the mines that which belongs to these companies. You are, are doing your own. You've got the rights. You give yourself the rights, mining rights as a country, right? You identify where the minerals. Then you hire people in mm -hmm. that particular mine. Mm -hmm. you, you employ people. You sell the minerals. You know, tax in terms of uh, you know the revenue that you are generating goes back to the to the economy, yeah. which is the country. So it's ways to create employment. Mm. I mean, if we have got a lot of mining companies, why don't the state then now decide to say we're gonna have mining companies? Mm. We don't temper with these mining companies, but we're gonna compete with them mm. and mm. also create jobs in those mining companies. That, then now you see that you are eradicating poverty. Yes, now, yes. Where, as, as a state, while you are, you are starting those mining companies, you are beneficiating. You are saying whatever we... Because you are wholly state-owned. You are saying whatever, 100% of whatever we produce, mm. we're going to start beneficiating ourselves. Mm. Mm. Is that not a chain of uh, you know employment? Yeah. You, mm. you are employed... Mm. So yeah. the ANC do not have plans mm. to do that. Mm. Mm. Nationalization of mines is out of the table. It mm. cannot work. Mm. It cannot work. You cannot tamper with the property. Anything that which touches the property, because these bank, these mining companies, they also go to the banks and get all collateral loans. You know, you know, against their their assets and so on mm. to operate. What are you saying? You're, you're collapsing the economy again. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, no, I hear you. Let's talk about action essay. It's another DA. <laughs> Action SA is another DA. <laughs> Why if you look that? in terms of the management yes. of, of uh, what you call, 
listen, whosoever fund, fund you, yeah. controls you. So they're funded by the DA? They're funded by the, the, the people who are same people who are funding the, the DA. Not to say they're funded by the DA. But they're under the umbrella. I would, like to, I would like to believe that because I'm saying go and look into their management. Who's the, who's managing it? <laughs> I mean, he's just there as a leader, just like uh, Musima Iman was mm. on the I believe that. Mm. Uh, you know, I don't think he's taking decisions. Then there's MK right now on social media. They're making waves. Let's talk about MK. What's happening there? Will it be registered? I mean, will, <laughs> will it run as 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 a party? <laughs> Apparently, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Who they are in me? court now. <laughs> <laughs> they are in court, and um, I would like to believe that uh, if anyone is against, uh, you know, uh, the ANC in court, I don't think they were, they're gonna make it uh, unless they come up with another another name. Because the Umkondo is itself, in terms of the patent and also the trademark, mm. I would like to believe that belongs to the ANC, the ANC. right? It carries the so history of the ANC. It carries the history of the yeah, ANC. So yeah. the court decision. Mm will actually you know give the you know give it in favor of the ANC to say that uh, but why is it like now the justice system is failing us just because the name has got history, <laughs> now the ANC must win no but it, I mean it belongs to them anyway it belongs to them it, did they they did they? not I don't know <laughs> I don't know I don't know, <laughs> is there I don't know in terms of the trademark but I don't know listen, listen I don't know in terms of the outcome of that case yeah. but I don't think that the ANC MK the, the, the MK will win against that uh, what do you call that case up until maybe mm. they come up with another another name but again it's becoming late if you can see now we're approaching elections mm. and i think that the 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 iec will be closing in terms of new registrations of new uh, what you call new political parties mm. and so on unless they are smart maybe they're busy with something cooking something just in case it's not registered or will run as this and this and this and this so if i can ask you about the corruption that is happening uh iec yeah what can you tell me? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you play uh, in politics <laughs> because I, people are saying apparently. They, uh, listen, listen, there is a perception that you know these coming elections is going to be rigged. I'm not sure about that. Mm -hmm. I've got confidence, you know, in the rule of law, mm -hmm. in terms of the IEC and what they will deliver. Mm -hmm. I hope, I just hope that they are going to do the right thing. But what I'm sure about is that the ANC is going is not going to get the majority. We are going to have a coalition government, mm. a government, what we call a government of national unity, mm. whereby the ANC doesn't get uh, the of uh, no, the right white ma majority mm. Mm. of votes, and then we are going to have other small parties and other bigger parties coming together you know, to form a, a coalition. Whether they will rule but under a coalition, that's basically what I'm, I'm projecting right now. But if you look in terms of, uh, you know, what people they are saying on the ground, they are fed up with the ANC. I'm also fed up with the ANC, yeah, right? Yeah. And uh, I think that it's, it's going to be good thing so that we, we are able to help to to, 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 to to look in terms of, you know, uh, 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 making the other parties also accountable. If you are a leader to say, okay, but here you are not doing it right. Here you are doing it right. Here you are doing so that you are able to be the watchdogs of each other. Mm -hmm. And for less corruption, we know in terms of appointments and how do they go and who's appointed, mm -hmm. are you qualified to take that? So a government of national unity is what will come forward. We don't know who's going to consist of those national government of national unity. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the ANC and other small parties. Maybe it's the other political parties based on who, whom they the, the people they vote for. Where do you see ERP like in five years? And we will be we will be a voice whether we are in parliament or not, but mm. we'll come here we'll, we'll, we are going to be uh, in in, in, in uh, what you call in the space um advancing for the issues of uh, employment whether we are in parliament or not we'll mm. continue to say let's create a conducive environment for business to thrive so that we're able to have you know, to create jobs as a country. And let's have leaders who are very intelligent enough. Yes, to, yes. You know, creative ways mm -hmm. to how... I mean, you're talking about 2.5 uh, million, million jobs. jobs the ALC yes. says is going to create in five years. Yeah. How many people are, 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 you know... People are still going to suffer. People are going to, yeah. to suffer. Yeah. So that itself, you know, doesn't qualify them to rule us for another 30 years. Thank you so much, Blessing. Thank so you I, I want you to, like, talk to somebody who's out there. Yeah. We are about to vote. People are busy registering. Yeah. What can you say to the people out there? 
I would like to say that uh, as CRP, we, adv we advocate for employment mm. of citizens of South Africa. Mm. And uh, we'll appreciate if you can actually vote for us so that we are becoming, we, we are able to be in parliament to lead policy direction mm -hmm. and also advance the issues of employment, mm. uh, you know, in the, in the government yes. and uh, to be able to change the lives of the, our people mm -hmm. and uh, to alleviate poverty. Mm. There are many people today in South Africa, there are still people who sleep mm. and who go to bed without having yes. to eat anything. Me and you, maybe yeah, we might have yeah. privilege that, you know, we might be okay in our lives, but mm. there are those people. For the sake of those people who are living in poverty and, uh, you know, languishing in, 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 in stress and so mm. on, mm. you know, that's why you should vote, uh, what you call, for ERP. For people to follow you on social media, let, let, let's talk about the ERP now. Yeah. What are the handles of the ERP? Uh, on Facebook is Employment Rights Party. Okay. Twitter is Employment Rights Party. And my other platforms is Blessings Ramoba uh, yeah. on Facebook and uh, also on uh, Twitter. We are also in all the platforms. I'm available there in terms of uh, watching whatever. And again, I'm, I'm, I apologize for being emotional. It's just <laughs> that the issue of... Uh, Unemployment, uh, they do affect me. You know, you know. When I want to see. I want to see other people like myself. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, being able to to move. Yeah. Uh, where I come from, I'm from a deep village in mm -hmm. or in Limpopo, mm -hmm. in Sohose. There, um, mm -hmm. many people. There are no opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, also, yeah. So I think that my activism also for the people that I come from and also for South Africans in general mm. uh, someone is going to be employed and that's yes. basically my passion if someone is employed they're able to change the lives mm. of their siblings they're able to change the lives of their people mm. and also you know have a great future yeah yeah, yeah. thank you so much ladies thank and gentlemen you. for watching us today Re one hour show with us by follower you can just click here was subscribe our follower fetu for the next episode erin glubu jengri erp it's here erin glubu jengri pedro baswa me very well as well to get rescats nyana our fetu the solution is here let's go and register and do the right thing until next time thank you thank you my brother hey yo zen hey what it do yeah um, born in 99, who is it to get my grease? Baby, tell me now if the feelings that decrease or maybe increase. Can we share Ibiza? Then I ate it in the morning like a cold pizza. Mosahara le boucher, or sapa and dina. Then I let that pussy clean, baby, I don't lead. Get higher than patrol by the leader. Had a saying, falls up with me, lady beggar mina. If you see my ex, bitch, tell her I don't need her. I was never like this, I was never beat her. Ever since the beginning, who to give a beat her. Come on, touch line, dog, a hot or like a heat. Where was I? Oh, Terry Majarina. Baby got a pure heart like Catalina. Every day, nigga got a sega or Ratalina. Dimi daddy, no give you longer and got a pina. Same time, dog, a life for the three pina. I reang, you get gay, merit, say win. I'm just saying, I'm insane, and I'm more mean. For the time, I own no Catago by John Cena. And now, I'm all about spares, and I'm lashing out. I got too many problems. I need time. I'm just to sit back and relax and just look at my life But nigga, I hold a time Yeah, yeah nigga, I hold a time Yes, katiga ska, take a time Yeah, I don't know how to rhyme I need to get my issues in alignment Bag a little bag, a sig a little cake And need to stop going after these T-Betty babies I got my drug on them first and second Got the punchline for sure, got it for sure, the lepe I got my drum